Hi and welcome. I'm Gabi Schlesak. I'm the Director of Communities at SEED and with me today is our CTO John McKnight. Hi John, how are you? I am great. How are you doing today? I'm also great. Thank you. I'm actually a little, you know, I'm a little hot. I'm melting here. Um, as you know, I am on Mallorca in Spain. And although it is uh, almost six o'clock, um, the sun is still out and it's really warm here. <laughs> and what you didn't get to see as we were talking before this began, is she has a million dollar view, probably one of the best views I've ever oh. seen from an apartment. So yeah, I don't blame her. She wants to wrap this call up quickly and go outside and enjoy that. Yeah, and I will. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Um, last time uh, we talked about, or you got, you talked me through um, the, the seat platform. You know, um, we have this little handy graphic of it, and um, I would like to see that now. Great, there it is. Um, so just um, a little intro. A seat token IO is an independent. And decentralized platform for conversational AI, like chatbots, voice assistants, or even clever talking avatars. And um, last time, John gave us a guided to tour uh, through the different components we can see here, uh, which are Rhizome, Greenhouse, Greenhouse is the marketplace, and um, then we talked a little about the channels where you can deploy your um, conversational AI. And today we wanted to dig a little deeper and um, we wanted to answer some of the uh, open questions that we had uh, from our community. Um, for example, um, how is blockchain um, we see this um, ring, Blockchain Foundation. How is blockchain involved here? Why does the SEED platform need blockchain? That is a great question. We actually have a token we call the SEED token, and it's a utility token. And it's used for exchanging goods and services on our network. And that plays heavily into Greenhouse, which we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. We will allow our users to create their own conversational interfaces or even create just components and assets, digital assets. It could be uh, audio files, video clips, or 3D avatars. Mm -hmm. And all these goods and services can be exchanged via the seed token. And the seed token itself, since it is a, a member of the blockchain, is able to do exchanges with other types of currency. So it is possible for people to, uh, to contribute and to do well using, the, the, using our seed token. The other component that, uh, of the blockchain that's very important is the fact that uh, since the blockchain data itself is immutable, it can never be changed, we have a true log of everything that's taken place. So you always know with confidence that, you, that the transactions we say have happened have happened and that you can see the flow of those transactions. Yes, and of course, um, conversations and any, any personal data will never be um, transcribed on the blockchain, right? This is, is all true. about the transactions, but of course not the personal data involved with it. Exactly, there will never be personally identifiable data in any transaction written to the blockchain. There will never be even portions of conversations that take place. There will be absolute security in the way that this is run because we highly value privacy and security. Exactly, thank you. Okay, um, and then last week, um, we talked about the different components that we have on the platform. Some of them are um, provided by Seed, by uh, Seed itself. Yes, maybe we can zoom in here. Those are the ones with our logo, like um, Dandelion. We talked about that. Um, Seed will provide an authoring tool from the beginning. And we have Pollen, for example. We will come to that later. The Avatar Builder. So these are components provided by Seed. But also, 
um, we have lots of other components that um, are from other developers. Um, so what is the difference here? Uh, the difference is we are an infrastructure builder. We are putting together a tool set that will allow anyone to develop and extend the seed, and, uh, seed ecosystem. So while we contribute some initial components, the system is completely open to third-party developers, both public and private, to be able to build any functionality they would like on top of the seed platform. And that can, can go anywhere from the types of engines that they use for creating uh, dialogue and conversational flow to the way they display avatars or getting information about stock market quotes, et cetera. We, will not put any reasonable bounds on anything that can be done. We're purely here to help provide a mechanism for people to be able to build great conversational agents. And if I got that right, um, this is also um, to combine different com components, right? I, I could, for example, I could start with the seed provided dandelion authoring tool you know, um, even I could use it. I was part of the beta test and it's really easy to use. And um, then I could um, combine it with a CUI engine like IBM Watson for, and, or, or um, Dialogflow. And um, so the power seems to be in the combination of different components, like from uh, also from uh, open source projects and uh, yeah, small developers, right? And small companies, not only the big five, um, but also um, just about everybody on the um, planet who cares about um, building conversational AI that um, respects the privacy. Absolutely. Yeah. And as an example, uh, I had a conversation the other day with uh, an amazing company whose name I won't mention yet, but they are Definitely in the spirit of a small company that's doing really incredible uh, things with conversational agents. Mm -hmm. And I got to see their authoring tool and the way that it was able to do uh, multi-language translation and attempt detection, which are all fantastic things for a conversational interface. And it's all code that they have made themselves and they're going to be contributing to Seed as well, which is great. So wow. there's room for everyone to participate. Yeah. And then we can build great things together. Um, so there was one more question that came up. Um, this is about pollen. You know, I, I don't know if um, you saw the presentation or our viewers, and, but Microsoft um, created um, a lot of buzz about what they presented um, recently when they showed this little hologram um, of the presenter and the hologram looked like her, talked like her, and then the moderator switched to speaking Japanese, you know, all live. And um, of course, uh, you know, that was a little fake, but the technology behind it was real. It was from Microsoft, but Microsoft has millions and billions of dollars um, to create such technology. So, you know, usually we think, yeah, we, we don't have a chance to compete with that. But actually, well, when I found out more about pollen, I was um, uh, amazed about uh, that power that pollen has. And maybe we can zoom into the graphic again um, to see where this is. Yeah, this is actually some a, a component the avatar builder, we call it here, um, up there. And, and so with Pollen, you can actually do what Microsoft just, just showed. I mean, except of the hologram, of course. Right, accepting the hologram part. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. We, we began development of Pollen, oddly enough, in October of last year. Mm -hmm. And Pollen is able to capture, it's uh, around 51 data points on your face, so it understands the shape of your face when you're speaking. It also can see your upper body and map those movements as well. So when you're talking to Pollen, you're talking to a smart engine that's trying to learn how your face looks when you, when you say things. 
so that it can be used to construct a facial mask that would be part of an avatar. The second thing that happens when you're speaking to, to Pollen is that it's prompting you to say things, that it's learning your voice so that it can create a digital copy of your voice so that your avatar can have your likeness and your voice. So you can maintain consistent branding, for example, or just do something cool to show your friends. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds amazing and uh, so this will be available on our platform as well and I can't wait um, to use it of course you know and, and to try it out and this is actually like the next step of conversational interfaces um, would, and, and I have dreamed about that all my life <laughs> so this is really just amazing that this is now um, being realized and um, I uh, didn't have a chance to um, look into the alpha version of the wallet yet but um, I'm yeah well I'm, I'm uh, very curious about that of course and <laughs> I, know, I know it's early but um, no but I hope that uh, within the next couple of weeks we can maybe uh, show how um, you know how uh, the wallet um, is used and how you log into the platform and then maybe we can carry on from there absolutely uh, and you will be able to see it and we'll be able to do some live uh, examples of the wallet uh, some elements of greenhouse obviously are, mm -hmm. our, uh, our identity system which is how we log in that's uh, all those pieces will be uh, available shortly for people to see. Cool. Okay, so keep me tuned or yeah, up to, up to date. <laughs> Always. <laughs> thank you, John. It was a pleasure having you. And thank you, Steve, for helping us. And so I'm saying goodbye and until next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.